Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In this example video, we will be covering a few examples regarding uh, the theory we just learned in the last video from section 5.4. So let's just get st uh, started right away. We have number one here. It says for each ratio below, determine the quadrant it lies in. So determine where the terminal arm is of this angle, um, the related acute angle beta and the sign of the ratio. So we need to find first the quadrant lies in, so we just draw the angle in our Cartesian plane and see where the terminal arm ends uh, or the terminal arm lies in which quadrant it lies in. Then the related acute angle is just the angle the terminal arm makes with um, the, the uh, x-axis. And then the sign of the ratio will use the casserole to find um, the sign of um, basically the sign of uh, the ratio of beta with the respect to the principal angle. So as we know, we have our ratio, right? It could be, this could be sine, cosine, or, or tan, or whatever, of theta equals plus or minus ratio of beta, our related IQ angle. So we just want to find out what sign this is using our, um, our cast rule, okay? So first let's go over A, we have sine, of 315 degrees. So first thing we want to do is find which quadrant the quadrant the angle lies in. So let's draw our Cartesian plane with our x and y axis. Here we have our initial arm, right? And now we have to find out where the terminal arm is by drawing the angle. So the angle starts from the initial arm and we go counterclockwise. And so since, since it's 315 degrees, we go past 90 past 180, past 270, and we stop somewhere in the fourth, fourth quadrant, which is where our terminal arm lies. So our quadrant, it's going to be quadrant four, right? This is quadrant four, and that's where our terminal arm is. And we can draw in our beta, and we, don't, we can't forget that we have to note that this angle is 350 degrees, right? That's our principal angle. Next, we have to uh, find the related acute angle beta, and we can do this simply. Oh, I forgot an arrowhead here. We can do this simply by um, using simple ang uh, like uh, subtraction and addition of angles uh, to find beta. Because if you take a look here at our uh, angle that's 315 degrees, it goes until the terminal arm. But if you were to go all the way back to the x-axis, you'd go 360 degrees. So beta is just the difference of that 360 degrees and 315 degrees, right? So we're going with this principal angle all the way to 315 degrees and whatever's left to 360 is beta. So our beta is simply 360 minus 315, which is going to be um, 45 degrees. So that's our beta. And now we use the cast rule to find out what is the sign of um, the ratio of the re related IQ angle with respect to the principal angle, which will get us the overall um, sign of the ratio, right, of the numerical ratio. So let's use the cast rule. As we remember, we start in the fourth quadrant with the C, and then we spell cast going counterclockwise, right? And remember, the letter um, tells us which uh, which uh, ratio is positive in that quadrant. So as you can see here in the fourth quadrant, only cosine is positive and we are working with sine of 315 degrees. So our sine here, right, positive or negative, in this case is gonna be negative because we're in the fourth quadrant and we're using sine, but only cosine is positive in that quadrant. And that's it for A, so let's move on to B. Same thing here, we draw our Cartesian plane, right? We wanna draw, oh, I forgot the axis. We wanna draw our initial arm. <coughs> and then we have tan of 110 degrees. So we just wanna, again, start at the initial arm and see how far we go um, and see where our terminal arm uh, lies in which quadrant. So we start here, we go counterclockwise so we go past 90, but not past 180 because it's 110, which is less than 180. And here is where our terminal arm lies. And this angle right here is 110 degrees, right? And 
the angle that the terminal arm makes with the x-axis is beta. It's our related IQ angle. So first things first, we can note already that we are in quadrant two, right? This is quadrant two. Uh, so that's the first step in the question. And now we want to find, again, the related IQ angle. And we can simply do 180, which is going all the way to the negative x-axis minus 110, which will give us its difference, which is beta, right? So beta is going to be 180, which is going from the initial arm all the way to the negative um, x-axis going counterclockwise. Um, but we don't go all the way to the negative x-axis. We just go to 110, right? So whatever's left is beta, 180 minus 110, which is 70 degrees. Okay. And finally, we use the cast rule to find out um, what sign our ratio has in front of it. So we spell cast again, starting at the fourth quadrant, going counterclockwise. And in this case, we're in the second quadrant where only sign is positive. And since we're working with 10, our the sign of our ratio is going to be negative as well, just like an A. Okay? Okay. Moving on to C, we have again our Cartesian plane. Oh, that's kind of bad. We draw our initial arm. We make sure to state our axis. So we start at zero at our initial arm and we go all the way to 285 because we're working with cosine of 285. 285 degrees so we go again starting from the initial arm past 90 past 180 past 270 and our angle ends somewhere here in the, the fourth quadrant just like in uh part a so our quadrant we know it's going to be quadrant four and this angle right here is 285 degrees next we want to find beta which again from terminal arm to x-axis this is our beta and again, just like an A, our beta is 360 minus 285, which will give us the difference, which will be beta. Okay, so we have 360, which is going again from the initial arm all the way around counterclockwise back to the initial arm, but we stop at 285. So minus 285 will give us beta, and that is going to give us um, 75 degrees. And that's it. And now we have to find out the sign of the ratio. Uh, we have to find out the, the sign of cosine of 285 degrees. So again, we use our cast rule, cast, right? If we don't uh, really have cast memorized, we want to just um, write in the letters. It'll make it very easy for us to see that we are in the fourth quadrant where only cosine is positive and we are working with cosine of 285 degrees. So the sign of our ratio is going to be positive, okay? Now let's move on to D and I'll actually erase A here so we have a little more space. So I'll be right back. Okay, so here we go, moving on to D. We have tan of 225 degrees. Again, we wanna draw our Cartesian plane. We draw our initial arm, our axis, and the angle, the principal angle is 225 degrees. So starting at the initial arm, we go past 90, past 180 but we stop somewhere in the third quadrant because we don't want to go past 270 degrees, which is this line right here, the negative y-axis. So here is our uh, principal angle and our beta, remember, is between the terminal arm and the x-axis. So this is going to be our related acute angle. And this angle, of course, is 225 degrees. And obviously, we are in quadrant 3. So that's the first part of the question done. Next, finding beta. This time, uh, we're, we're going past 180 all the way to 225 degrees. But again, this line right here is 180, right? If we went from the initial arm to um, the negative y-axis, it's 180. And if we go to the terminal arm, it's 225 degrees. So the difference between the terminal arm and going to, uh, sorry, the difference between going to the terminal arm and to 180 degrees is our beta. So beta is going to be 225 minus 180, which is going to give us 45 degrees. That's our beta. And the sine, again, let's use cast. C-A-S-T. 
we are in the t quadrant, so only tangent is positive in this quadrant, and we are working with tan of 225, so our sine will be positive. And that's it. Okay, so moving on to question number two. It says, determine the primary trigonometric ratios at a point P, which is at x, uh, x coordinate at negative 3 and y coordinate at 4 on the Cartesian plane. Then determine the principal angle to the nearest degree. So first thing we want to do is draw out our question so we can visually see what's going on. So here is our Cartesian plane. Let me make that a little better. All right, a y and x-axis. Now we want to plot our point, negative 3 and 4, point P, which is at about, if I extend this a little bit, negative 3 on the x-axis and about 4 on the y-axis. So we're about here. P is right here, point P. Next, what we want to do, well, that's where our terminal arm will be, going from the origin, which was a 0, to that point will be our terminal arm. And if we want to draw in our principal angle, we draw our initial arm and the angle for going from this initial arm to our terminal arm, which will also be the hypotenuse of our triangle, which we will draw in a minute. Um, this angle will be theta, our principal angle, which we don't know yet. Now, again, we want to draw in our right angle triangle and the, hypo the hypotenuse R of this right angle triangle is going to be our terminal arm. And in here, between the terminal arm and the x-axis, in the negative x-axis, we have our related acute angle beta. The side length of this triangle, of this side of the of the triangle, will be 3. Even though it we're going in the negative x direction, right? We're going this way. So technically, it will be negative 3 in the ratio. But this actual side length, positive side length, right, that we can measure is 3. And here, the side length of this side will be 4, right? Since we're going up to 4 on the y-axis. Now, we kind of want to extract this triangle out of here just so we can visualize it a little better and work with beta, right? Our side lengths are 4, 3, and R, again, keeping everything positive. Next, since we want the primary trigonometric ratios, we have to find the hypotenuse because, again, sine is opposite over, hy over hypotenuse, and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we're going to need that R value. So we can simply use Pythagorean theorem here to find R. So we can say that R squared is equal to X squared plus Y squared, right? And now R squared is going to be our hypotenuse. X and Y are going to be our other two side lengths. So we have 4 squared plus 3 squared. So R squared it's going to be 4 squared, which is 16, plus 3 squared, which is 9, which will give us 25. And if we square root both sides, this 2 will cancel out with the square root. And R will be square root of 25, which is 5. Okay, that's our hypotenuse. And we're going to use that to find the ratios of our principal angle. Right? So... This is the part where we need to consider which way we're going and which way the terminal arm is pointing, if it's pointing in the negative x direction, negative y direction, all that, right? So let's go through each ratio so we can see um, what it is. So sine of our theta, right, of our principal angle, will be opposite over hypotenuse, right, which in this case is r. Right? And opposite, right? Remember, we have to kind of evaluate over here from our related AQ angle to, for like what's positive, what's adjacent, and where's the hypotenuse. But we are evaluating for sine of the principal angle and we consider in which direction the terminal arm is pointing to. So in this case, beta, uh, we can uh, kind of visualize this as sine of beta instead of theta, right? But then we switch the signs. So here, opposite over hypotenuse, opposite of beta, we have four, and the hypotenuse is r, so we have, and r is five, so we have four over five. Now here, we need to see if we're going in the positive y direction or the positive x direction, 
because we are using this side length, which is in the y direction. In this case, the terminal arm is kind of pointing upwards, right, in our Cartesian plane. So we're going to keep the four positive as we're going in the positive y direction. Next, we have cosine of theta, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. And here, we are again going to substitute beta in here, right, to evaluate this triangle. We're kind of evaluating this triangle, right, with all the positive side length. And then we see in which direction our terminal arm points to, right? So if we want to look at this triangle instead, uh, for cosine, we have adjacent of beta, which is 3. And we have hypotenuse r, which is we know is 5. But now here is when we have to go back to our Cartesian plane and see which way the terminal arm is pointing. Because in this case, we are using our x value, right, of the side lengths of our triangle. This side length is on the x-axis, right? So now we have to see, is the terminal arm pointing in the positive x direction or the negative x direction? And in this case, which we can notice from our x coordinate, actually, because it's negative, we can see that the terminal arm is pointing kind of left instead of right. So we're pointing in the negative x direction, which will make our three negative, which will make our adjacent side negative. So the ratio cosine of our principal angle theta is going to be negative three over five. Next, we have uh, tan of theta. And finally, we have tan of theta. Same concept. We have an opposite over adjacent. It's going to equal opposite of beta is 4. Adjacent of beta is 3. But again, as we saw in sine and cosine, our 4 is going to stay positive because we're going in the positive y direction, which again, we can see in our coordinate over points, right? Our uh, y coordinate is positive, but our x coordinate is negative, meaning we're going in the negative x direction. So this 3 is going to be negative. So our ratio for 10 theta is going to be negative 4 over 3, or 4 over negative 3, right? So those are our ratios. So that's that right here. Now, the question asks us to find the principal angle to the nearest degree, to the nearest whole degree. So in order for us to find our principal angle, we have to calculate for beta, and then uh, simply subtract 180 minus beta, which will give us our principal angle. Because remember, if we start at the initial arm and we go all the way to 180 degrees, we're going all the way to our negative x-axis. But with our principal angle, we're kind of stopping at the terminal arm. So the difference between going to 180 degrees and going to our terminal arm is beta. That's the difference between them. And if we rearrange that equation of uh, 180 minus theta equals beta, we will get theta, sorry, 180 minus theta equals beta, right? So our equation that we want to use is beta equals 180 minus theta, but we don't know beta yet, so we need to calculate for beta. Before we do that, the way we calculate for beta is simply we can use this triangle over here and use one of our ratios that we know and calculate for beta. So in this case, we can use, since the two numbers that we have written down here are 4 and 3, we can use tan beta, which is going to be opposite of beta, which is 4, and adjacent of beta, which is 3. And again, the ratio here stays positive because we are using our related acute angle, our, our acute angle. So our angle is acute. It doesn't matter which direction we're going in. We just need the length of that triangle. So if we... Uh, do the tan inverse of each side. So tan inverse of 4 over 3 and tan inverse of tan beta. These two are going to cancel out. We're going to be left with beta equal 10 inverse 4 over 3. And if we put this into our calculator, <coughs> we will get about 53 degrees. We'll get a we'll get 53.1 something, something, something. But our closest rounded number is about 53 degrees, and that's what this dot on top of this equal sign means. It just means about 53 degrees. So now that we know beta, we can use that equation that I wrote down before. Theta is going to equal 180 minus beta, right? Which makes sense because if we're going to 180 degrees and we subtract beta, so we go backwards beta, 
we get theta, right? As we can see from our Cartesian plane here. So let me draw this back. Okay, so theta is going to be 180 minus beta, which we know is 53 degrees. Everything's degrees. And theta is going to be 127 degrees. And that's our principal angle. That's our ratio for our principal angle for sine, cosine, and tan. Um, and if we want to check our answers, we want to plug in theta into these ratios and see if we get it. We want to plug in theta into these equations. So sine of 127, cosine of 127, and tan of 127, and see if we get these ratios with the negative signs and everything. If we get the same ratios, then our, our principal angle is correct. Okay. And that is it for the video, guys. I know it wasn't uh, many questions. It was only a couple, but each question takes quite some time. So again, if you want more practice, and I suggest um, you do get more practice with these types of questions because there are a lot of variations. Um, so I suggest you go back to the theory video, look for the textbook questions, um, and do them and keep practicing. And thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next theory video.